Definitely appreciate everyone coming in. Um, pretty much touching on some uh, some of the stuff we've already kind of covered, um, and some of the some other things we've kind of uncovered uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, our opinions, of course. Nothing that we say here is financial advice. I work on an oil rig for a living, so but, uh, <clears throat> if you're taking advice from a dude that's a literal geologist, is a uh, super kind of skeptical to begin with. So. Um, but yeah, definitely appreciate everyone popping in. Um, that's the first thing we, we've been touching on, the things we've been uh, talking about is, um, of course, Pulse Chain and kind of where we're at with that. I know like uh, there's a certain vibe in the in the community, a certain, uh, you know, we've definitely started to get a little hype back. You know, it's definitely seen some projects that are starting to do like really well that are starting to bring attention to Pulse, uh, the Axis and his, his, uh, his protocols and the people that are all working with him on Pulse Chain. But, uh, and sometimes it feels like there's a divide in the community and uh, you know you want to be able to give people a something good to look forward to or things that i continue to feel like i've kind of uncovered and um did some homework on and um knowing that richard probably can't do what this is and everything that we see going on can't do it really alone and uh we all know that um Whenever he took it, that sacrifice money and started spending it, just the fact that he started throwing it around in my eyes made it uh, made it pretty clear that he was a uh, he was making moves because he could, and uh, I think that 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 alone is pretty bullish because with the lawyers that he has and the people that he has by his side, if he wasn't or he was still going to get annihilated or in any if any any more trouble than I believe than a fine. Um, he wouldn't be throwing money around, just spending it at all. That's that, that sacrifice money in particular with those wallets. Um, although Richard is a pretty ballsy dude, I still think that, uh, you know, after holding that, that that for so long and then, you know, buying SDI like we saw and then everyone assuming, you know, by then, you know, taking that money, turning it into Ethereum, still holding the SDI, which he still has. Um, that, that in my eye, that kind of opened up the door. So like, okay, well, there's something more to it than a, uh, Meets the eye with Spark being such a new protocol. Spark launching like May 9th, like days before um, uh, the actual launch of Pulse Chain. Um, the voting with MakerDAO, um, the uh, <clears throat> on chain that we saw, like he was like, you know, collecting different tokens that they had from them, like, such as Rad BTC. Like they were made, like some kind of deal was being made or some kind of, uh, at, least communi- at least communication was going on. So, like, Whenever we saw that uh, Winter's Mute was a company, I don't like the, the connection with Winter's Mute, just the fact that they're an algorithmic trading company, um, they use utilize bot technology, like we're definitely seeing something like that on Pulse Chain sometime about to, I think it's a lot of, I think it's probably another company's own servers, um, but I believe that Winter's Mute was the connection to the sacrifice money that they threw in, um, was more than likely related, related to the money that they raised for, uh, for MakerDAO. So that was the connection I was trying to draw with them. And the fact that, you know, it is an algorithmic trading company um, that has, you know, this technology of, of literally bootstrapping liquidity into uh, into new, new chains and new layer ones. And uh, the fact that, um, yeah, we're definitely seeing bots come on and they're kind of doing their work. And uh, seemingly they get there. They're benevolent. We've seen them, you know, lose money. We've seen them... Um, literally trade and move around hundreds of thousands. That's the one thing about bots. Like they won't make a trade unless you tell it to lose money, like, or you tell it to, you know, or if it's just on auto gain, it'll literally swap around and move around hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, for pennies. So, and that's kind of what's what we've been seeing. And like, so it just seems like the, 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 some of the, most of the bot technology that we've seen on pulse chain, uh, seemingly seem to be, uh, benevolent, um, in my opinion. One of the other things that we uncovered was uh, they were someone or they, the bots themselves, were over on Ethereum um, messing with deep, deep, deep and old liquidity pools, right? Some of these were locked liquidity pools, um, part of certain things that, you know, you wouldn't be able to get a hold of unless you either set it up a long time ago or um, had some kind of voter connection within the, uh, within the Ethereum uh, but they wouldn't even be able to kind of get to it, so to speak. So it's almost like he went in and 
before, you, whenever you're, whenever you're using this uh, this type of technology that I believe they use, which is Solidity, uh, not Solidity. I'm sorry. Um, Stability AI, and then there's another one called Stability Diffusion. I mean, of course, they kind of have their own reputations. They're they're both from the same guy, but the guy kind of got the you know because it's a copying company. It's literally a company that goes in and copies images, copies copies architectural framework and technologies, and then literally comes out on the other end, and you have a, a full fledged copy. So before the chain launched, um, and before the snapshot happened, well, he took the snapshot of, of Ethereum, and then he went into to a certain part of Ethereum itself. And he started uh, liquidity pools that he had control over, and he started wrapping them up. You can almost think of it like a, like a zip file. It's like he started rendering the chain up and making it making it to where it was more compacted. So whenever he took the, the other the next snapshot, it was like a more compacted file of like pools inside pools, you know, folders inside folders. Because that's the way the blockchain actually looks like. Whenever you take the blockchain and actually break it down, it's just it's a list of folders. You double click that folder, it's another list of folders. You double click that folder, it's another list of folders. So he was doing it in a way to where he could take, you know, uh, maybe a, a group of files or a group of folders that were just kind of off, like would have just kind of didn't make sense, and he just kind of rendered it up, and then he took another snapshot. Um, and this, this again, this is kind of my opinion, and this the way the technology works itself is kind of why I think of it like that. And then so whenever he had Pulse Chain, um, he did the same thing. So he came over to Pulse, and he said, "All right, now build the uh, build the the architecture the way that I that I told you to." So it started laying the, the groundwork for the, the zip files that he laid out. And now, over time, it's, it's been able to go in. And I believe that's why he's went over to Ethereum. And that's another reason why he told us to remove our liquidity. Like, he's like, y'all, you know, remove y'all's liquidity over on whatever, you know, V3s or whatever, because we're not going to have access to, access to it over on uh, the Pulse chain because it's V2 stuff. So I think that's what he's, uh, he's, uh, he's uncovering and what he's unlocking. But the, another big thing is is that he's doing it, and he did it too, uh, finance. The same um, same clear, like, weird names of the files, the same exact weird NFTs um, seemingly tied back to him also possibly taking a, a, like a snapshot of the VSC among maybe some other chains. And this is massive in our opinion. <laughs> Um, this is all like again. This is this is kind of speculation. Um, like why he why he would why he would why he would be doing this to begin with? Because um, it's like with a twenty x leverage that he has with S die and the other things that he has the uh, the ability to do um, with that the copy token. If y'all don't know, like so this this other thing that it's like a real world asset type of token to where anybody that comes in, like so if you give someone if you're trading an Ethereum to it, it takes it one Ethereum. And it'll give you back one token, but it starts cataloging and categorizing uh, these things and putting it, putting it like in a folder in the back where it remembers that this person gave me, you know, one Ethereum. I only gave them one token, but the value is three thousand. And then if someone comes in and gives it fucking die, it's like you hand them one die, and the thing does okay, it takes one die and it categorizes it, puts it in another folder. And so if you look at it, the, there's a the token that first like came out and was doing this was called Blast. Uh, so. Blast, whenever you go in and look at their stuff, their stuff is labeled and categorized exactly like some of the stuff that's on chain. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's, uh, it's not tracked. It says it's spam or scam. And, but, the, but if you look hard enough, there's actually real value tied to these, like real dollar values. You know, most of, most of everything that I've seen was all stable coins. Um, the stuff with the, like, USDT, things like that, it seems like he's been replacing it. Um, and he's been using the 20x leverage. Now, again, this is highly spec, highly speculative. Um, with that, with, with that real world asset token, what he could do is he could flash loan out the entire USDT side of, uh, of liquidity pool, or he could technically create actual LP tokens and flash loan out as uh, flash loan out LPs, like the entire LP. Like that's what the 20, in my opinion, that's what the 20x leverage is for. Literally flash loan it out and then give them their own copies. Why is this important? Um, this is kind of the, the mind blowing thing. Uh, we know that the, the 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 bridge technology that's over here with the Spark Swap, which we don't think is related, but they do have it. It's super fast, and they're kind of doing it in a way to where it kind of works like an atomic swap, where you send tokens in, and you can kind of have them sent somewhere else. So, the way that things have been lying out and like from working out, like. That we're assuming is that he's trying to connect these chains together. 
and make a privacy, like a multi, multi-chain, deep with deep liquidity, um, privacy EVM. Um, if that's the case, it's fucking. It explains a lot of why he why he's always pointing. Oh, I'm doing this for your freedoms and this and that. You know, and like, because if he goes down, we all go down. And if you're in his position, where would you put your money? And how would you do that in a way to where, before other people get in? But the reason that they're unlocking that liquidity is because it's only a matter of time before he comes in and takes it, or most DTR token that they, uh, that seemingly doesn't have much control. Because we, we know we know for a fact MakerDAO's changing their name. Uh, they're getting rid of Maker. Um, they're, why, whatever they're doing, it has to be worth getting away from uh, a company that, that has grown to be as big, big as they are, as, as profitable as they are, worth billions, and to literally just hand it away to a company that's been here for six months. They have to get to something. If Maker's making their own chain, um, which is going to be a hybrid proof of work, proof of stake um, type of uh, ecosystem that's going to mint stable coins. So it's going to be a deterministic type of uh, ecosystem um, that you can actually determine based on, you know, the actual output, what the, like, input-output, like, if there's a, you know, what's going to be coming out. They're not minting die, though, right? They're minting wrapped die, WP die, WPUSD. So where does that have to go um, after they wrap it? After it's wrapped, it has to literally become unwrapped somewhere. And the way you decentralize that is you have, you know, is you have one chain, that's kind of minting this wrapped version of it. You maybe you have Ethereum, and then maybe you also have Pulse Chain that already has a bunch of die that's minted that it has to, you know, get up to or like work. You know, why mint it whenever it's still when it's still in existence? And then you know, technically they would be like the Federal Reserve minting mint the minting press, right? And then it would come to the Pulse Chain where the users and everyone would technically be through just default of the. Of what's you know what 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 could be transpiring in our opinion? Um, I know that could be kind of a big heavy hitter, kind of dropped it kind of early on, um, but it just there's a lot that explains that you know some of these chains, some of these things that he's been doing. Like we know for a fact, Spark launched on Spark itself launched on Gnosis. Um, he's he's trying to connect communities. The the other the other Spark that that, that came from BSC, you know, EMP. You know, it seems like they have some like, like that. The bridge isn't something that's cheap in my opinion. I mean, to know it, I don't think, until the DAO comes out, they're not going to announce any type of partnership or any type of anything, I don't think. They might never. Um, it's kind of like, everything's been hush-hush, and I think it's kind of been for a reason. Um, although, they, it's not like they, in my opinion, I don't think, they, they wouldn't be this far along, and we're doing moving all these pieces, unless they were almost done with it, and now they're just kind of either waiting for people to catch up, to figure out what's going on, so it's like, um, and, uh, or it's or it's not, you know it's community is more community related than uh, than uh, most of us could see, so it's kind of kind of where we've been at the past few days and just trying to been uh, you know past few weeks trying to connect the dots between uh, Maker and uh, Spark, which we know is, exists right, and the the fact that like Spark itself, like whenever they went in to do these to get votes on or to do certain things like to raise the debt ceiling for BTC or to you know, just whatever it is, whatever it might have been, you know, the votes would always go through right away. So, like, they were able to literally, like, push through votes with their, like, seemingly with with ease. And, uh, you know, they, they were even saying that Rune was pretty much using his own big bag to, to push these votes through of the, for the end game, which is what they call it, the quote-unquote end game, where they're literally giving up the name MakerDAO. Uh, the MakerDAO will no longer exist except for on Pulse Chain and on Ethereum. And... Spark will just kind of go around and, and build front ends, which is what they do, right? So they, you're able to kind of, you're able to get into this S die. Anyone can, and you need, anyone can build a front end, and anyone can get the 20x leverage, right? And then, then the bots itself, or the technology itself, you know, if you're utilizing the the bot technology, you know, it won't make a trade um, unless it's going to be a profitable trade, or unless you actually tell it to lose money. Um, would it uh, ever, you know, go out and make those? types of uh, inconsistent trades. Um, now, the bots are, in my opinion, that's another massive thing. And you tie that to a Tropa, right? Um, it's kind of change, the, change gears a little bit. Tropa, in my opinion, it does way more 
than what meets the eye, right? It's not, it's not there to pump the dye. It's there to, in my opinion, to protect dye when it gets to a, to the level that it needs to get to. The, uh, the social consensus reaches a, you know, dies one dies one dollar, you know, which it is on every other chain. And, uh, it'll just, with the liquidity and the, uh, you know, the, the amount of people, the sheer amount of people that are coming in, you know, and said centralized exchanges can't get it from anywhere else. If they're knocking on Maker's door and asking them, asking, asking Maker where to buy it, you know, where does Maker point them? More than likely it's Pulse. Because there's already 22 billion. What their, their whole goal within the next three years is to have 100 billion die um, minted in existence within the next three years. Um, and we know, like, they took a snapshot of ETH proof of work where I believe we saw Rigid move 8 billion. I thought it was, a, it was a large sum of money of Hex moved over and put in their liquidity pools. Now, they might have been using that for a, uh, for a snapshot to where they could just have that type of money to see what happens when they move it around. Or, in my opinion, it could be for used, utilized for uh, incentivizing his community um, for sticking it through and, you know, not buying into this insane theory, right? Because they just wouldn't. You know, they, would, they wouldn't be the ones to buy PDI. They wouldn't be the ones. It's just kind of, kind of the way that he taught them, right? So, by default, you know, you're always going to have pushback from them um, because it's going to be hard for them to kind of wrap their heads around. But, in my opinion, Richard Hart, his goal is to make as many different people wealthy as possible. So... Why would he do the exact same popping up the bags of the same group of people uh, over and over again? Whenever your goal is to make as many different people wealthy as possible, you're going to have to come up with a new type, a new version, or a new play to uh, to make that happen. And I believe that is, you know, quote unquote, the the dumb money play of it's kind of it's so obvious that you know, Pete I deserves to be a dollar, and you know, the crazy theories and everything else. It's just. Uh, it's going to be one of those things I think we look back on and we're like, well, yeah, it was always going to happen. And, and it, I, I think we're starting to feel this thing in the community. They're like, we're starting to fucking doubt Richard Hart. And I think that's what he, he, in his opinion, he's probably like, he's probably like, oh, hell yeah, you know, like, bring it on. You know, there's more up my sleeve than what y'all could ever, uh, than what you could, could imagine. I know it's not, not just me in my community that have, I can't remember exactly who said it, but I like flipped through and someone else kind of rendered and said the words as well. You know, like, if Richard can pull this off, you know, the AVM privacy chain. I can't remember exactly who it was, but uh, so so other people within the communities haven't seen it too. And the uh, like this uh, the ability to have that, and then we know it's like Sparks technology um, that they're coming out with, like their bridging technology was like overwhelmingly powerful. Like it was almost to the point to where like like why would you need oracles on a bridge just for you know? And they were they were saying it was for die, just having the oracles on it on a two way a two way bridge, you know. Uh, you know Connecting all three chains makes sense, and then also that's where your single side liquidity for Pulse X could come into play, right? Like that's whenever you could literally single side stake up against this uh, this bridging technology, and uh, seemingly everyone else could probably, they could provide the the other side of the bridge that way. I mean, it might not just, it might not be private. It might be, you know, but he, he's definitely unlocking deep pools of liquidity on those other chains for something, right? Is he bringing it over here? I mean, he, he could, but uh, in my opinion, just it would, you know, well, that doesn't, doesn't thing necessarily really make sense. Good mention about that is a lot of that value is he's purposely hiding, right? Like, the, yes. the, the fishing contract situation, and he did that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the, the, yeah, the value is correct. Yeah, why would you do that? I also want right. to point uh, out real quick. Uh, today, yeah, I noticed that one of the pulse chain sacrifice addresses actually moved. Uh, some stables around and it bridged it to uh, the pulse chain network using the bridge and then it moved it from I think two to three wallets and then back out into ETH and then used Cal protocol to take zero slippage back into ETH from stables so uh, Richard's buying up uh, ETH uh, with, with these stables and we know that seven of the wallets that received funds from the pulse X sacrifice uh, the recently deposited 20 million die each wallet into the S die protocol for Spark. So, so you know this all, all this all the speculation and all the stuff that we're looking into is uh, you know it's bringing out quite a bit of evidence. Right, 100. percent Appreciate that, guys. Let me take a breather. Something that is going on the lands tangents. So yeah, man, there's just there's, there's there's quite a lot of things, it's, and like that, and that's the, one of the main reasons about bringing this up is so y'all guys can start doing the research too, and then so we can all kind of come to a you know 
a figurehead of you know where where this narrative could be lead and what what it means for you know getting into things early. Where where do we stand as a community? You know, is it is kind of the, you know are we turning our heads and you know getting mad because our bags are being pumped or you know I think anyone that's been around the Atropa community has felt this uh, a new like a resurgence so to speak of not just hope but of just like what true DeFi is the ability to launch a brand new chain with and you know open dexes and you know literally a layered liquidity system um what he's building in my opinion is a is pretty much what he sees as a as the tech as the way money flows through an economy so he has all these weirdly named coins like leprosy and cocaine and uh whatever that go that you know whatever but like how do you how do you make bots or how do you make the blockchain simulate how money moves through regular society because in regular society you have people that are drug addicts that go off and their money gets dwindled down and gets spent off that way and goes to the you know and then you have the people that are entrepreneurs and they're going off this way with their money of course they're never going to go down there but if you got it but if you want to simulate like with the botting technology that would never actually be to generate unless you teach them to be degenerate or have them go so we're able to create these layers of uh liquidity layers that simulate pretty much exactly how money would flow in like an actual real economy even to down down to the point to where there's literal you know open-ended uh, drugs you know just like it just like in the actual world but that comes back to what what does Atropa mean or do like in my opinion like the next contract up from Atropa uh, and then well from the PDI from the PDI holders after Atropa is the Circle 2 Circle 2 pretty much tracks PDI to the point of double right and then since everything is ratioed out and it keeps going higher like so you have Circle 2 and then I'm sure there's not not, not really a, not a, a circle four, but there's going to be something that's ratioed up to the, to that extent. And then there's one on top of that. There's one on top of that. There's one on top of that. And they're all the way up to like the million dollar coins with like a little bit of supply. And since they're all tied together, and the, the body technology is there, it it protects Dai 100. percent How does that happen? It's a, like imagine a waterfall with like you know it's like there's, so all they have to do is control it from the top to the bottom. So they're only having to mess with this coin and this coin. They're not having to chase it around. So like if someone tries to flash loan out die, or once die reaches the, the level of where it needs to be, this this technology, this the way that it would work, like these things would act like a waterfall effect to where as soon as it gets to a dollar or someone tries to take a flash loan out against it, these bots will front run the other bot and they'll just ping the price starting from the top all the way back down to the circle two. And it's like they're not having to chase this thing around as because the mis mismatch ratios like it's literally just a fucking super insane line of defense that protects die against any type of uh, manipulation. And why does that matter? Because ninety percent of attacks that happen on stable points is due to flash loans and manipulation. Like this makes it just makes the chain pretty much med proof. It points this uh, med proof, and it makes it makes definitely makes die flash loan proof because they'll front run the bot itself. Um, and, if, and again, the bot won't make a trade that that it's going to lose. Um, now that again, it's speculative because I mean he built that bridge like it's just the way that I see a trope. Like it's literally how movement money moves through an economy, um, like just a monetary the monetary flow of money from it minting for it from it flowing around, and then I'm sure that they all have more roles than just that, so to speak. You know, but in my opinion, that's the the strongest use case is that it is literally a defender of die, and like in such a way that like is massive because if you can't flash loan out against it and you can't um they, but only like that's why they have die to where you can turn it into s die like die itself could never be which, which wasn't ever really wanted to be flash loaned against or attacked because he was literally had, had 150 percent collateralization rate so if you did that you would get 60 66 cents to the dollar so you would have to make it worth it right but but this is just like an extra line of defense against uh against that right and then Maker changing their name, coming out with they want to be more of a meme, be more, have more units, uh, so to speak, in their in their uh, stuff. It's just like it's kind of something Richard would tell them. You know, this is like in my opinion, it's like a that's a Richard thing. Unit bias, you know, um, understanding that their tokens worth three thousand now. It's kind of hard to get new people in. You know, they're kind of just kind of resetting, and uh, understanding that you know, Spark has taken over the whole lending aspect of things. And what would be better for them than to be able to uh, go in and be the, uh, not the gatekeepers, but the, 
decentralization of the actual DAI protocol, like in such a way that it becomes more decentralized. It, uh, it splits up the it splits up. It's less of a headache for them, but it splits up the uh, the workload, so to speak. And like with these three combined, in my opinion, with the bridging technology that the uh, that they're going to be coming out with the Oracle stuff, I believe that a lot of it seems ready. I just think that we're just kind of waiting for uh, more things to unfold. And uh, I mean, like it's pretty exciting in my opinion. Like we've had, we've been talking about it for the last past couple of days. It's just like you know, what all do we do that we know? And then, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like we only know what we know. The blockchain, the blockchain doesn't lie about most of this stuff. So it's like it's, it's all there for most people to see. Um, I think that you know, no one's ever going to come out and admit to anything. <laughs> just like whenever, like the when he made his tweet the other day when he had the Edgar Allan Poe, he's like, look what someone made, you know. And it's just like that's a, a super cool technology. I mean, that's that in and of itself is you know, it's heading us down the right down a path of uh, of massive, you know, you know, because yeah, he never did never liked speaking about the JPEGs, the, the JPEG aspect of NFTs, like the you know, but he never said he didn't like NFTs. He just had it said, you know, when the utility comes and when the, uh, the ideas come, you know, that's whenever. I, I would possibly jump on board. So it's he's definitely coming on board. And I think that's exciting because like being able to write things onto the, onto the blockchain like that. And, uh, uh, just gives a whole new power to things. Cause what we're seeing, like another thing with the Tropa is like the, uh, the crazy thing of like the Snowmia itself. And then like what we saw with, uh, taking the, uh, like the, the token name and it's tied to a YouTube, like the K-pop thing. It's like, we're, we're, we're another thing that, Atrope is trying to open up is this 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 touch into the real world, like something where the blockchain and the real world can finally meet and merge, and you would be using the blockchain technology and you wouldn't even realize it. And I think, you know, the gaming aspect of it, opening it up to the world, and then utilizing that as a way to actually decentralize. With, I mean, with their layer two that they're building, right? I mean, just I, it's like if they're that far ahead. There's a reason they're that far ahead, like. Because they believe that whatever's coming is going to come so hard and so fast that, like, number one, that you want a layer two just to have it. But a trope is going to be so big in this the, it, itself. You know, you want another type of decentralization of a trope to where it can be protected in a way like it's protecting DAI. And this way, it's like an off-chain type of DAO, so to speak, that has this game gaming gaming feel to it that just brings more people in. And then also just showing people like the, uh, yeah, just like the trip, the whole thing is like, it's pretty massive. And like the fact that either him and Richard never spoke or the only, the only way they ever spoke was like through blockchain. <laughs> I think there's, there might be more to it than that, but it's like, they definitely had to have seen each other on testnet doing something because we know that, uh, we know, um, James on testnet was up to some pretty wild stuff. Um, and then seemingly went over here, changed some of the names of things and, uh, Again, I think that there's more that meets the eye to some of the Satropa stuff. And uh, as it continues to unfold, I think it's just, it gets more and more exciting for everyone within the community. And I know as other people write it off and, you know, it's just launching shitcoin after shitcoin. It's like, once you figure out that it's like, oh, it's there to protect die, uh, it's there to keep die where it needs to be. Um, it's going to, you know, it controls so much of the supply, you know, and he's been nothing but a white hat and a, uh, a good, uh, Smith but a great person in this, I believe, uh, as far as I can uh, could imagine that anyone that could have that kind of control could be. And they, uh, just keeps building and keeps wanting to build and keep, and, and asking us to build too, right? So you have people like PLS Pup and Sunny that are going off and, you know, building and like recreating, like recreating these types of uh, ecosystems because it just, it's what's needed um, to create these, these floors of liquidity of just, because uh, it just helps protect the chain and then decentralize out the actual uh, the path of uh, the, the flow of money right so I think it's another thing with the trope that we probably won't know about until things get get going and people's trying to start selling trying to sell large bags of dye I think it's gonna push you into a, a decayed like, a, like if you try to sell a huge bag of it and uh, it'll literally it'll help you it'll force you into like some illiquid tokens and make you have insane slippage I think that's uh, another aspect of it that it could technically do because ever since everything's tied together, I mean, it could have a, a way of protecting die once something has a certain amount of volume or value versus what's going on the, on the chain at the time. And it, 
it might push you up into a, a second or third layer of a tropa where it's just more illiquid to where you're literally just get, eating, getting eaten up with slippage on the way out, which would, you know, protect us against some of those guys that might, might have copies and, uh, so quote unquote dump everything that people have for whatever reason, like people think that those guys that find value over here, um, come over here and just, just dump it, which we might see. I mean, we might not see, we might see it touch a dollar and come back down. Um, we might see it, you know, go over, you know, but uh, I still think that a trophy's that trophy's main goal or purpose is to protect it whenever it gets there. And then clearly on its way there, you know, it's, it's, it's been accumulating the whole time. But, yeah, man, definitely exciting stuff, and I definitely uh, and I think the, can't uh, wait to, to go back to SDI real quick. Yeah, thing about I, I mean, we were speculating on this last night, like what took so long for Richard to launch Pulse Chain, and SDI being potentially a major component of all of this. The yeah. SDI launched two days before the Pulse Chain fork, so SDI was on chain. Which yes. you know is massive, so like uh, that could have been the why what, what took so long yeah. for Pulse Chain to launch. I agree. Yeah. See, and that's a, that's the thing too, right? Like we know for a fact that only a few people you have to you have to be an admin within the protocol. You have to know how to work the protocol, and then like to even be able to take that leverage out and to be able to you know he, we we saw him give funds to Lido fucking months ago. We saw him give funds to Compound months ago. He was setting himself up. <laughs> to literally do what he's doing all over on these other chains to where he can go, take leverage, and then literally he could either, he does not take as much leverage, and then he can go over to Lido, you know, borrow from over there so he can use other other tokens and other other things and just other aspects of it. And again, it's, not, it's probably not even him. It's probably just literally a, the bots set to do what they're supposed to do when the money and the things are set in a certain position. Um, these things, because in my opinion, there's uh, it's been set and it's been laid out in a ducks in a row type thing it's just been kind of i think they're to the point now they're just they've executed we've seen them we've seen that he's kind of just laying out the hints you know buying the s die you know we know that you're making he's making an apy on the on that while holding it but you know the collateralization all the stuff that nine irons done. yeah if y'all haven't read anything that nine irons done like some of the stuff that he's touched on you know he's he even touched on the fact of like it, you know, how, how it's going to reach the 22 million uh 22 billion and then be over collateralized and like 20x over flatter wise because he believes that you know that 22 billion is um is the actual number well and and honestly that would make sense because if you take a take a copy of something and you have it sitting over here you have a copy of it um as soon as the the values reach a certain point um of over as over there then and the values are, are over there are over here but just like not in the same way right it's just more of a theoretical value and honestly that's all that really takes for something to peg because everything else like if finance comes in and all these centralized exchanges want to buy die and there's nowhere else to buy it but through polls um and that's seemingly what's going to happen is because die by itself will, will cease to exist it will not it's like it uh it'll still exist on on uh ETH, but it won't be this in the same in the same manner because we know that they're coming out with something called ether die which is literally like ETH or die, I guess. It's the same thing. It's the weird copy, the weird copy token where you give it ETH, it gives you one back, gives you like it's like this. It's a way. It's a way to onboard real world utility and real world assets onto chains. So it's like you can actually put like houses and land and you know use these things as like actual collateral. And uh, that's massive, right? Like we saw we saw MakerDAO utilize silver, like silver liquidity and things like that. And the other big thing about them opening up these deep pockets of liquidity is that they're front running fiat coming in here and fucking throwing a bunch of money in on us again to where we're having to mint tokens out of thin air. So one of the reasons we got into, like there's been a big bind and you know makers spent all this time burning die was because whenever people put fiat into the system and you literally have to mint two coins out of thin air that are backed by nothing because they gave us one fiat. Right, and if you look at and, and that right there, that puts two tokens that are a dollar value, and, and puts the blockchain in debt. And if you do that enough times, and if you have other companies that aren't following regulations or rules, and that's why Maker has went straight to the MCD, which is the multi collateral die, to where it can be backed and and be supported by tokens that are inside the ecosystem, or like the big the big players. It was first ETH, and then it was for, you know BTC and ETH. And then they kind of spread it out, and then they, you know, through their protocol, they could accept Maker, and then 
some other some other big tokens, and that's that's probably what we'll see. Um, over here, we, I mean, I don't know if Richard doesn't technically need to utilize the vaults in, in that same way. I mean, he might be able to utilize them in another way. That might, might be where we throw our single side of liquidity, and then, you know, you have ink that is just going to be a very, very powerful weapon in, uh, in all this as well, you know, to bring. You know, and we also know that there's there's bounties going out for whales um, on outside the pulse chain. There's like five, like, you know, five six thousand dollar bounties coming out where they can, so these guys can move millions onto chain. And not set off whale alerts, so we know that there's there's money moving around, and there's people people watching, and there's um, they want their privacy, you know. And I think Richard's always wanted that too. He's had to run away from Bitcoin, you know, so to speak. Uh, you know, had to run away from the community. I'm sure, the money's still there. He's had to kind of do the same thing with Ethereum, and I think that was the whole plan. He's like, look, the only the only safest place I can be is something that I create, and that. I, the only say, and then like the only safest place that he feels that he can be, that's that means that's where the safest place that his community can be and the people that are inside crypto, you know, because it's a it's a dirty, dirty world, and it was either he gets a hold of that liquidity, uh, someone else does. I mean, some of the pretty pools were clearly his. He had literally set them up for the for the pictures, uh, for the snapshots, rendered them up, and then literally de-rendered them. It's like told the the technology to do it, and then like if you look at a uh, you can go on YouTube and find this out too, but they're running the Solidity AI stuff on, I believe, 60% of the machines, um, like the uh, the validators of Pulse Chain. So, like, if they're running that stability stuff, it's it's there for a reason. It's it's there to, it's there to make the copy continue to uh, to maintain and and reach these levels of quote unquote stability, but also dif diffusion, right? Where it's kind of it's like these two different things of like infusion and then like defusion of itself to where it's just like unrendering of the blockchain to where when you're clicking on these liquidity pools if you look at pulse chain it's completely different than any other chain you click on a liquidity pool it's got fucking 80 fucking names in it and everyone's fucking in that liquidity pool and those bots trade within that liquidity pool right so like the further are you up in that liquidity pool the more um that just means that you're you're holding more liquidity within that liquidity pool and those bots are more likely to tag you on their way up so that's like the waterfall effect that I'm talking about. Like if you look inside there, they're literally going to have a, like that's going to be laid out with the tokens that need to be in there. Those bots can just literally just ping it up and down, which are, it might not be the same liquidity pool, but in retrospect, it'd be literally just trading up that ladder, like starting from the very bottom and then just all the way to the top and being able to help control and maintain um, die whenever we reach those levels. So, but yeah, there's no other chain like it because there's no other chain. Like if you go click on BSC or um, ETH, the chains themselves and the things themselves like there's one or two tokens in there maybe just one you know then it's burnt and then it just the pvp aspect of the chains like we're over here like people are launching tokens and then like literally handing each other one percent of the supply to burn it like what like what the fuck are you guys doing like you i couldn't in the i couldn't fucking do that anywhere on the bsc like whenever whatever was going on whenever all that was moving on like you couldn't you couldn't convince people just to burn their supply in general much less to partner with someone and then make a liquidity bonding uh liquidity bond and then burn it right so it's just that, that there's a different feel over here the stickiness of the communities is different the knowledge of the communities is next level just the the acceptance is there i just i just definitely we definitely all have a feeling and a definite a definite definite feel of the uh you know just pop our bags richard kind of thing it's like in my opinion it's it's like he can literally they could literally come up with a way to him for, to, to mint that money all over again so to speak and uh, literally have two massive bull runs in the in the so to speak within the pulse chain, right? Being able to get those things to parity uh, close close to it, and then uh, that protects that protects a lot of people from a lot of things. Because if you have copies reach parity on multiple chains, that so if Ethereum does go down or something did happen, you they would they would still have their copies on pulse. Um, they would still have their copies on any other chain that they you know that. It's going to be utilizing it. And that's why Maker is taking a snapshot of their own. Um, they took it already. And I believe that there's, going to, like, that there's going to be a historical date from now on where people, when they take snapshots, they're going to go back to the day before Richard did what he did. And they're going to take snapshots of, <laughs> like, the 4th of, of April, <laughs> 2024. Like, that's when their snapshots are going to go back to. <laughs> because I believe that he, uh, he uncovered and did some stuff that... Uh, that people already knew about, like the work finance talks about um, using locked liquidity pools and being able to leverage and loan them out, um, and getting into these uh, these these uh, 
these other like locked, seemingly locked liquidity pools, and being able to unlock them through the use of loaning or um, other other aspects. But you know, with the deep liquidity pockets, it's it's massive for for, for what we believe could be that that try that at least what the the three chain triangular type of a meta meta chain privacy with with that with the privacy technology. Yeah, that's again highly speculative, but it's just massive. But it makes sense um, for like just in general for him, right? There's someone that's a billionaire that, you know, I believe that the, the only other thing after that, that if that comes out, the only, like a connection to, to, to Bitcoin would be, would be massive because onboarding and stuff like that would literally just do itself. Like they would come through other chains, you know, there would, there'd be a, a line of communication between the three chains, um, so to speak. And there's the way for, uh, for us to be in the right place at the right time. And now it's just kind of like a, a waiting game, but yeah. So Rick, I, the one thing we talk about a lot, um, I'm curious, uh, we go back and forth and as far as speculation, uh, the implementation tokens that we talk about, you, can you talk about that, what they are, how they might potentially... Yeah, so I was, yeah, I was talking about them earlier, so yeah, the, it's, if, uh, Q, I invited you to speak, but if you're there. Okay, so yeah, there are, it's like a one-for-one I was kind of kind of touched on it a couple times, but yeah, it's like a one for one uh, acceptance type of token, where it can literally just mint whatever it wants and burn whatever it wants. Um, and if you're the owner of a protocol, you can do it since like or the, the owner of tokens, you can literally burn burn die down to wherever he wants, pretty much. And you can just uh, just the, the ability to have that kind of control. So if like he, if he if if something did happen, they didn't want to have that much in circulation, they could do two things. Well, die no, no, number one, die can rebase. So, like, if we got to ten cents and he wanted to kill ten percent of the supply, which would can tilt, which would knock out, you know, a lot of like a certain not ten percent, but like ten, like like ten rolls of our bags, you know, we got to ten cents and he wanted to take it all of a sudden down to two billion, but he still hit a dollar. He could re, but guy could rebase, um, up to the uh, up to where it needs to be. But he could also, technically, he could he could burn the tokens, um, in one fail swoop, like uh, you know, um, just burn through anything as long as you're the is that, is that what you're t- t- touching on? Is the the fact of being able to to burn that die down if we needed to, or like yeah, the, the, yeah. how it just copy yeah it just it can copy anything so it's like it's weird how it works because it like literally categorizes what it is like so if you look at blast blast they do it but they also rebase ETH they literally like they like they ETH itself like the real fucking protocol ETH if you're holding your tokens on blast. Um, and you're you're a part. You can actually you can either be a part of the rebase or not a part of the rebase because the rebase can work for you and against you because it can be a positive rebase, which means everyone gets tokens and it it it, it, it increases the, uh, the the total supply for everybody, or it can be a negative rebase. So if they didn't make money that month, then everyone all everyone loses, <laughs> everyone kind of loses what's going on. But the but the actual token value goes up. It's kind of weird. It's like a it's you're sacrificing. Like whenever I was a part of a protocol called uh, Gravit Token, it went from it went from zero. To a, a 1.7 million dollar stablecoin, right? <laughs> and like on the way up, everyone you know, everyone was joining, and of course it's going to go up for you know, it lasted a couple months. You know, within the by six day, of course we're sitting at 100 something million, but we're having to deal with the thud of you know, where's my tokens? You know, and it's just like people didn't couldn't grasp the understanding of you're sacrificing your tokens to protect the chart, and in this case, you're sacrificing your tokens to, to literally get to the the million dollar uh, the million dollar thing. So I mean, like the Okay, yeah, so base has the ability to do that, like literally rebase ETH, and that's because the way that they, they're accepting all these tokens, and then they have like this own, they have their own swap protocol. So well, another thing that we've seen them do uh, with these implementation tokens is uh, they, they have like a swap protocol sitting behind them. So like if you're if you're giving it ETH, it knows that it gives you ETH, and you're giving it DAI, and it's getting DAI, and say if it, if it has a bullish, or if they have a bullish or bearish sentiment, they might take that DAI and swap it into, swap it into ETH. Right. And then they can, you know, or if you're just running the implementation token on yourself and you're just making money and you're using that just to, to huddle everything in and then categorize stuff and then utilizing it to turn it into a bunch of, you know, whatever you need to, um, which is what he's been doing. It's just, he can, he can just take, take any token in, swap it to any token that he wants and then take it out and swap it back. And he, and he can do it all in like one fell swoop as well. And it's been, as he's doing that, um, it, yeah, you can. It's technically, you can. It's minting and burning to a certain wallet, but it's also kept in a in a in a, in a, in a category on chain, 
that's not tracked, right? That is says it's spam or scam, whatever. But it's just kept in a category just like that to where because the value doesn't would hit the chain twice doesn't need to hit the chain twice. So that's why it's cat. It seems seemingly that's where that's where I found out. It's like okay, well not all this. There's real value behind it, but it's it needs to be hit. It's just kept off and categorized in a way to where it's just not double valuing certain things. But the way that he's done it is like he it's literally missed. It's kept this stuff off chain purposely to where I believe that whenever it does unlock, it's going to have its own you know its own category so to speak. But there's Q Hold on. Let Q pop up here. Approve. Yeah, I was just curious if any of the other speakers had anything they wanted to, break, to touch on, or if we can just start pulling some people up if they have questions, because we've been at this for, what, 40-ish? Yeah, we yeah, were pretty good, yeah. The, okay. Yeah, if anyone's got anything, Q, where are you at, buddy? I got you up here. You're probably on a front end motor somewhere. Uh, driver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Sound like you're all good. All good. Yeah, does anyone have any uh, questions, thoughts, anything like that? Um, so feel free to raise those hands and you can get on up here. Um, definitely appreciate everyone tuning in and uh, taking it to it. We'll, we'll, we'll probably open the, uh, we'll open up the VC in the, my uh, Telegram as well, y'all, so I can come hang out in there. I'm gonna walk in here and grab a soda while I'm still talking about it. I'm dying of thirst, literally at work. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, it's uh, definitely, in my opinion, it's, 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 it's exciting to be a part of. And, uh, you know, even if just 10% of what we said, and I believe the 10% that matters is the protection of Zai. And that's like, that's not even speculation, uh, in my opinion. And then the, uh, the fact that, uh, <laughs> the, uh, that Maker and Spark and uh, Edgar Spark and Richard are all working together, seemingly, um, or they had to work together at some some certain point to where to get to where they're at right now. Like, um, and then now it's just kind of like everything's kind of unfolding in front of us. And then as soon as he bought the S guy, it's like in my opinion that was just huge because he's not going to spend that money. No one wouldn't spend it without his lawyers, you know, saying something or. Uh, uncomfortable enough to spend that money within a protocol that literally just came out right like it's like one of his uh would be something that he would try to tell us not to do not to get into unless you're very certain you know about what's going on you're not going to throw, throw money around like that into, into a protocol unless there's trust or some something had been built some some layer of trust and i think that he actually has something to do with the way that spark works the way that the stable coin will you know, building a stable coin that no one's ever seen before, right? And uh, my opinion, it's pretty much what we're seeing. Um, and I think that there still might be some more twists and turns along the way. Um, we've had to revise revise some of our thinking and, and some of the things that we've, uh, you know, that we were no means, you know, um, ever going to be sure about anything, right? But we do know that, you know, the way that most of this works is social consensus like if we have people that believe something like you go to the grocery store with a 20 dollar bill to go buy milk and groceries and gas right like you need that when you go there and you give that person 20 dollars that they give you back change it's because they believe it's worth 20 dollars right other than brainwashed to believe it's 20 dollars so through this sheer willpower almost i feel like uh eventually this is going to you know reach levels of you know, changing multiple you know, communities and other people's lives. It means the fact that so many other communities are utilizing the actual uh, protocol. Um, and, you know, there's other things that we can do to, do to help uh, collateralize if we needed to. You know, we could actually launch something like our own liquidity force and use the, use the tokens that are starting to, starting to build them up. And there's, there's just other things that we can do to help as we get a little further along if we need to. But I think... Uh, yeah, man. So it's pretty exciting to kind of be a part of it for now. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Greg, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, this has been talked about many times before, but again, like, uh, a lot of things on chain going on, right? We're speculating what the end goal is. But just the, the sheer fact that somebody spent, I think it was, what, a million dollars back in July to turn the minting of Guy off? Uh, right. Why, yeah. why would you do that if if die wasn't meant to be for something at some point like if it's a co if the yeah. copy was just the copy just because 
whatever to make the copy because he had to fork the chain. Why? Why would it? Why spend a million dollars? You know, turned off to do that. Yeah. Well, that's actually a good point. I uh, I mean, that's what that's definitely some of the stuff that nine uh, nine iron had uncovered that uh, you know, someone had spent it. Um, and I think it was more than just more than that. I mean, I think they always knew they were going to turn it off. It might have just been um, more of a a play on some some of the stuff that other stuff they have going on. You know, sending sending stuff to Lido and to Compound way before it. You know, and that's not knowing why. Like, why would you do that? Like, why would you send them money? Why did they do that? So it's like now he's just setting them setting setting up these bots and her first success so to speak and you can tell like and the, these bots themselves and this technology that he's utilizing it's like kind of kind of crazy what they can do <laughs> given enough time and given enough uh given enough power they can create sentiment so what we've seen over the past couple months is like this this volume on bsc and like past couple, especially past, past couple weeks the volume ramping up and and leading up to and then after the the we saw the the bots actually trading on BSC, right? It's like they literally created a sentiment to where it looks so natural that uh, <laughs> you just, you know, they're able to literally create sentiment. And that's the, uh, you know, I think we're heading to a play, uh, heading to a future of like automated, you're, you're, you're just going to sit back. It's going to be an automated, automated trading for all of us, you know? And if you, 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 if you don't put your money to work, you know, and you have to, and you still, like I said, you still have to have your money simulated as if it's still working through a regular economy because we're not going to, the economies aren't going to be the same as what they were or what they, what they have been. Um, I think that could be a, another thing for Disney itself is just like just a way for money to move around into a, a community of people that have their own free will. And like I said, the way that you can do that with botting technology is like by creating this, this flow, this inner flow of monetary policy um, that the bots have to trade down to because it's just that's just what they do they look for anything that that's a profitable trade at the time and even though it might not be often just like it might not be often that you know there is more often than not actually in, in today's fucked up society that somebody becomes a drug addict or whatever you know like you still have that you still have that simulated you have that simulated effect which i think is fucking neat you know everyone else is like why do you name this that it's like and, my, and like you know a lot of people are trying to uncover it and then it's just like at the end of the day it's uh you know it's his vision it's he's a creator and uh it's like super exciting to as to find out, you know, that why would he put so much effort behind um, protecting Dow and why would he put so much effort into, you know, the, the P stables and the and and all this other stuff if he himself, you know, didn't think this was, you know, didn't think this was didn't think this was possible. Um, and this dude's you know, exactly the kind of person I thought he'd be, just super fucking smart um, and just absolutely. Uh, ahead of his time, so to speak, and then creating these liquidity floors and teaching the community about liquidity and uh, just, yeah, like paying attention to things that we usually wouldn't pay attention to and then doing things that maybe we wouldn't have done before as a community and, you know, even taking on him as a, you know, buying the bottoms of the the hex and, you know, just trying to be an all-around, you know, uh, staple and good person within within the community. I think he's and he definitely led the charge in that. Like the way that he, uh, the way that he first utilized everyone and got everyone involved with the IRC chats and had, the, had them by their nicknames and things like that to get their attention. And just the, uh, yeah, just the way that he's built his community has been nothing but awesome. The face reveal, the timing of the face reveal. I believe, you know, just I believe things are, are well on their way. And now the, the hardest, the hardest part is done. And now it's just about quote unquote, quote unquote, you know, sentiment and community belief and then he, I mean, there might be a certain sorry about the beeping there might be a certain place a certain point or a certain place that he wants to see see things but you know it, right now there's just so much uncertainty in the community but it's good to see like like access live and the stuff like man that stuff's popping off people are dead that's what that the one good the one thing that you that you definitely need is just that kind of stuff green fucking charts don't have don't care how they get there but that's one thing you get you get eyeballs on you you get them to listen to you for a little bit, and then that's that's one of the main reasons why it kind of came out of my little my little quote unquote shell, and just kind of started speaking on some of the things that I found because I felt like you know it was just for whatever reason. I'm, whenever I talk, there's people that tend to listen, so um, might as well use that skill set to the advantage of myself and then the community. Um, so that's one reason I kind of popped out of my shell. I've always been a part of the community. I've been around since the very first Pulse Chain sacrifice. I would just sit around and twiddle my thumbs because they, they were speaking a completely different language than I knew. 
So if some of you are in here and have no idea what I'm talking about, just rest assured, keep coming back, guys, and uh, just you know, put in the effort, and you're going to get what you put in to it and um, get out what you need. Um, that's kind of like a, a given, so to speak. But yeah, it took a while to get to where I got, and then I mean, by the time this PulseX sacrifice came around, I was speaking a little bit more in the PulseX, uh, PulseX chat, and then, yeah, I've just been waiting for Pulse Chain to launch for forever, pretty much. I, was, I spent most of my time on the BSC, Doing my best to convert BSCians, <laughs> whatever they are, Financians, to the Pulse chain. I just felt like a, you know, that was like a good, a good spending on my time. It's almost been almost over a year and a half since I actually launched it to like baby Pulse X over on the, on BSC. That was, uh, was actually kind of fun, but that was a good old BSC days, like. Uh, but it was just, it's not the same feel as what we have here. It's just not the same type of community. Because I know for a fact that like, once you get someone in this community, I don't care, young, old, whatever, like they're gonna, there's a certain vibe and a certain feeling here that uh, that just, that keeps that keeps people coming back. And I think that that is the best thing that Richard could have ever done is build a foundation through Hex and, you know, start being able to capitalize on, on that. And uh, only getting, only getting better and, bigger and stronger as we move along and uh, even though he's gotten everything and the whole his whole world twisted upside down it seemingly seems to be building a way for us to never have to well not to never but to to have a way out to where if we ever did you know it doesn't, it doesn't matter about the, ty how, the amount of money that you have just the, the ability to move your money around like that and just the thought of that that being able to uh <clears throat> be able to come to fruition is uh it's pretty fucking massive in my opinion part of my language but yeah we're probably right at an hour right now, guys. So, uh, what do you think? Anyone else have any uh, thing to pop in there with Sponge? You good, bud? Yeah, I'm good, man. You pre you pretty much covered everything. Great, great job. <laughs> that's uh, that's how much I see. You know, re rants, re rants. But uh, you know, yeah, I, I mean, think we're good. I so, mean, I, I would just say if anybody has any questions, just um, request yeah, the mic. Think, um, we can right. take some questions and then uh, we can wrap it up. Also, if you guys yeah, have any questions and you can't hop up, always uh, you can always hop into t.me slash pulse trends. And yeah, well, if there's a VC, you could uh, hop in and ask questions. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And like, again, it's all highly speculative. I'm just a hard hat wearing, boot toting geologist. So, um, yeah, but I love this stuff. This is like something I definitely live for, man. So I just, uh, Hope that the community can continue to grow and that uh, we can all, you know, work through the things that we need to work through and just do it to do it as we once did uh, before. Uh... Yeah, so definitely exciting stuff. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and just we'll get this out and uh, pop off over there and then I'll open up the VC over there. So, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, one last, one last thing, because I did miss the first half an hour. Uh, did we touch upon uh, how Rich Park potentially create mechanics to? Uh, create money flow needed to incentivize single sign staking holders. I do know that that was one of uh, the major concerns of people who don't understand the situation. Well, how, how could Richard Hart uh, fund things like the incentive token and single sign staking rewards uh, through the way that he's building things? No, I didn't really touch on that. But you're so hard to hear, bro, that it might be painful to listen to. Uh, of course I am. Uh, is this better? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is better. That is better. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, so I was saying, did we touch on uh, how Richard Hart could use the bot network to otherwise find the money required to operate the incentive token and the side of the Wow. And I, know, I did not work on each chain. Might be worth it. I, yeah, yeah, I didn't touch on that. That's one of the major, major, major ones for our uh, skippings. I can't really hear you though, bud. I would, I would lie. Just whenever we pop over to the, uh, to the other chat, we can, uh, we can touch on that again. Because I just can't, I can't understand you, man. I think what he's saying is Otherwise. how, how, how is Richard Hart or whoever the, the bot network how it's going to fund the incentive token like there was some the VC last night there was some questions uh, from that one individual about how some of this would be funded 
and basically the bot network, right? Is is yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer to that. The bot network. Yeah, the bot network itself. Because yeah, that would that in our opinion that would be it. Because it's like it, it we're, there's a substantial amount of bots that are that are running uh, on Pulse that would probably be you know, millions of dollars worth of servers at least um, that are running um, on it. And then uh, yeah, they don't trade unless you tell them to trade for a loss. They don't make the trade. And you know, being able to take the twenty X leverage out uh, with SDI, being able to use the uh, the uh, the flash loans against entire liquidity pools. So these bots could literally turn liquidity pools upside down and just make those types of trades real quick for a profit. Um, and that's why I believe that he has um, die protected the way that it does, because so these bots won't do that to die or won't attempt to do it, right? So, um, to die because they won't be able to because the the, the trope bots and just the way that the everything's built around it would, would keep it been prevented from being able to uh, be flash loaned against if if he does if they if they do start utilizing that type of uh, that type of trade because the, the the bots don't trade unless it's for profit and then the only way to the, the, you have to spend more money to make more money so if he can use the twenty x leverage and then go out and flash loan out a l people so to speak. It's the, it's going to be your biggest way to make gains um, to fund anything. I would I would assume within the uh, within that space. But yeah, definitely uh, appreciate everyone tuning in. And then uh, we'll pop on over there. I'm going to be right over there myself. Then we'll uh, get this thing spread out and get everyone to uh, chat. up. definitely appreciate everyone tuning in, guys. You want to uh, plug the yeah 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 the, my... the, the the Telegram yeah 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 t dot me uh, forward slash pulse trends. So that's what it would be. So uh, I'll drop it in the uh, drop it in the uh, my Telegram. Just make sure give us a follow. Give a pulse pup me everyone up the speaker. Give me a little follow if you don't mind. We definitely appreciate that. To everyone tuning in, and then uh, yeah, we'll chat with y'all guys soon. We'll have another VC, and then yeah, be able to hang out soon, guys. Thanks everybody. <laughs>